All right. Uh, my name is Margaret Campos. I am the director of telemetry and missile systems at Physical Science Lab uh, of New Mexico State University. Um, I grew up in Gallup, New Mexico. Um, I was born and raised there. I lived there until I was um, college bound. Um, my favorite things about growing up there were just, um, it just seemed like a different world from everywhere else, uh, even in New Mexico. Um, there was a lot of different cultures there, uh, Hispanic, Navajo, Zuni, a lot of different Native American cultures. Um, one of my favorite memories of growing up there was um, going to the Indian ceremonial parade every year. That always happened to fall on my birthday. So um, I always looked forward to that time of year just because I got to see a, a parade. They had a lot of different Indian dances, a lot of different people coming through town. So it was always a very exciting time for me. Um, and I just really enjoyed living there as a child. I think it exposed me to a lot of different people, a lot of different um, people who had different backgrounds. Um, so it was, uh, I think, gave me a lot of experience with dealing, dealing with different type of, types of people and different types of experiences. Um, I myself growing up there was um, bicultural. So my mother is Mexican and my father was Navajo. So I got to see both of, of those different worlds and um, I really loved it, uh, live, loved living there. Um, I do still enjoy going back there as an adult and taking my kids um, just to see the different artwork and um, different areas there in town. Um, so I uh, w had a lot of academic strength when I was growing up. Um, my favorite classes were um, math and science. Um, I did not like writing very much, <laughs> but um, I did have a, a very big strength in math, and so I did. I do use that in my uh, engineering career a lot, um, using it for engineering analysis, design, um, even uh, for budgeting purposes. We have to make budgets for different projects that we're working on. So math, math, and more math is what definitely helped me in in this career path. Um, and even though I didn't enjoy writing um, or even reading that much, um, that is also a big part in which what I'm doing. You have to be able to read what customers want you to do. You have to be able to understand it. You have to be able to draft uh, technical responses back. So writing uh, is also a very big um, uh, help in, in, in the engineering pathway. In the aerospace industry, you don't from what I, in the career path I have taken, uh, which is mainly telemetry, um, that's data processing. We do work with government contractors, so it, it's definitely a plus to be able to get a security clearance. Um, and in order to obtain that, you have to have um, a, a uh, obviously no um, criminal type records, you have to have good financial records, you have to be, you show that you're um, honest and um, ethical person. Um, and so you get a lot of background checks, they'll even check uh, personality, uh, pers uh, what are they, um, check with different people in your life to do, to conduct those background checks and get references on you. Um, and then uh, the other, um, Certification that is not necessarily needed, but definitely wanted when you're working in the aerospace industry uh, as an engineer is probably ordnance certification. So that's um, not really handling, well, it can be handling explosives, but um, it, it's also to be around the areas where there may be uh, ordnance operations or hazardous operations going on. So I do hold uh, an ordnance certification for this position. Um, in order to get that, um, certification, you definitely uh, need to have some experience uh, on the job. And so uh, typically you have to work with uh, your your employer to, to get that. They don't just give it to someone who wants it. You have to have show that you have um, experience with it already. And then you um, have to show that you are 
uh, needing to have it. So um, your my job helped me get that uh, certification. Okay, so uh, I am the director of telemetry and missile systems. Um, I have been in this job a little under a year. Um, I, previous to this, I'm, I'm kind of transitioning into this position. So previous to this, I was a lead electronics engineer for this division and it's at Physical Science Laboratory at New Mexico State University. Um, I have worked in this position um, as an engineer for uh, 16 years and so this is my 17th year and I started as uh, like I guess be the division um, di uh, division manager and um, it before I was even an engineer in the uh, in this division I was also a student so I actually started uh, at PSL um, my June my sophomore year of college and I worked through um, until I graduated and then I was offered a position here. Um, so in this position, I've done a lot of different things from designing electronics that are flying on a telemetry system. So telemetry is basically uh, getting data from a flight system and gathering that data and then transmitting it down um, via a transmitter and then collecting it um, in a ground station and decoding it. Uh, from there, you can get data charts, you can get data uh, analytical data so that you can do some um, analysis on uh, the environments or um, whatever, if there's an experiment on board, maybe it's video or temperature um, or there was an event that was supposed to happen. So uh, it's just collecting data and then being able to uh, receive the data and then decipher what that data is. Um, so I've built uh, components that go on telemetry systems design, built and tested. Um, I've also uh, put entire systems together and taken them out to the field. Um, and done testing and integration with um, our customer, our end customer, and then also participated in launch operations, um, helping install the uh, target or rocket onto a launch rail, and um, then watching the launch, which usually, that, I think that's, um, that's why I ended up staying in this position so long is because um, it's just so exciting to see something that you've built uh, leave leave Earth and uh, get data on what's going on on that vehicle and then, um, you know, just deciphering all the stuff that has happened. Um, and then uh, we typically, after launch, will take that data and work with our customers to see exactly what they need from that uh, data packet. And um, then we start the cycle again. Um, we typically are um, not doing the same thing every day. It's kind of a cyclical process where we are in a phase where we're designing, then we're testing, then we're launching, and then it kind of starts over again. Um, so right now I'm in the transition from being that engineer that oversees um, the day-to-day -day of, of the launch uh, operations or the target operations, fabrication or testing operations that we do or support. And uh, now I'm transitioning more into the management um, side of things. So I'm working with the customer to get contracts in place and working with my engineering staff to make sure that um, they're executing um, uh, the things that we've agreed to, to uh, provide the customer. It's a hard job to do. It's uh, time consuming sometimes. Um, I've traveled uh, for weeks at a time. Uh, we have a crew that's gonna be leaving um, in the summer to go support launch operations and they're gonna be gone for 10 weeks. Um, sometimes it's in climates that are harsh like Alaska or um, in the winter in Scotland or sometimes it's uh, uh, Hawaii or France or wherever, uh, Australia, I mean, there's a lot of different um, places that we can go to do some of these launch operations. So I've definitely been able to travel um, more than I would have if I uh, didn't take this position or to kind of take this uh, career path, I, I feel. 
Yeah, so my five-year plan, um, I actually have on my dry erase board because of uh, 2020, um, my five-year plan is to get through this year, <laughs> and that's kind of been my motto. Um, it's kind of like a day-to-day, get-through-the-day um, type thing, um, but as far as my overall five-year plan, um, for me, I feel like I've, uh, the, the main the main goal that I had when I set down this career path, you know, as almost most uh, young engineers or whatever career path that they end up going on um, want to want to achieve is that top level manager position. And um, well, I feel like, you know, I, I got it. I made that big goal that I had set out for myself. Um, so. Uh, I've kind of been at a loss of what what am I going to do in the next five years. So I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I'm still trying to every day uh, just be better in the job that I have right now to support um, my engineering staff and my engineering students that I have here and um, supporting the customers we have. Um, I did uh, take a small hiatus in this career to um, work as an uh, instructor at Doniana Community College. I uh, worked as an aerospace technology instructor where I taught some aerospace classes. I taught some electronics classes. So um, maybe teaching again possibly might be in my future. Yeah, the, the soft skills that I think um, I've learn to utilize and leverage and even um, uh, improve upon during my whole career path uh, starting in college was my communication skills um, because you have to be able to communicate um, as an engineer you have to be able to communicate your design you have to be able to uh, discuss why you went a certain path um, and um, you have to be able to uh, listen and understand what other people want want and need you to do for them um, as far as the end product. Um, and then again, uh, the other skill that I definitely have to utilize is time management. Um, you have to be able to be on time. You have to be able to um, carve time out um, to do some big things. You have to carve time out to do little things. You have to carve time out to do paperwork. You have to carve time out to do your timesheet, um, you have to carve time out to design and test. So um, those are the two soft skills I think that I utilize the most.